Today, I'll be ranking every episode from Season 1 of Tales from the Crypt. The first season of HBO's campy horror anthologies consisted of only six episodes, making it the shortest season by far. But how does the early set fare today? Feast your eyeballs on this wonderful little tier table. Perfect for a little ranking off. Well, what will my least favourite episode be, and what grade will it receive? In last place, we have Laver Come Hack to Me. This is the tale of a just married couple whose honeymoon takes a very grim turn from the get go. Caught in a ferocious storm, the newlyweds are forced to break into an abandoned house. It's not quite the Ritz, but it does provide them with creepy vibes, a bed for adequate marriage consummating, and Chekhov's giant battle axe. We are informed over and over about how the groom is just here for her money. In other words, he intends to fast forward to the till death do you part section of their vows. The big twist is that the bride not only shares a similar sentiment, but has orchestrated this whole situation in order to keep a twisted family tradition alive. That's not bad on paper, but it's a 10 minute idea stretched over half an hour. Amanda Plummer's performance and the groom's revelatory nightmare are the two highlights, but that's not enough to warrant many repeat viewings for me. Disappointing, as this entry was written by Michael McDowell and directed by Tom Holland, who have both worked on many projects I've enjoyed. With the show only having six initial episodes to prove itself with, and with the source material's untapped wealth of stories in their hands, Lover Come Hack to Me seems like a strange choice to adapt at that point. Sleep tight, Charles. Leaping up to the average C category, I give you Only Sin D. Rom com director Howard Deutsch directs his wife Leah Thompson from a script by Fred Decker in a tale of killer vanity. Thompson plays a prostitute named Sylvia Vane, get it? <laughs> Who decides to finally make some changes to her life. Maybe get a new job, change your hair, or wipe out your pimp in spectacular fashion. Blam. Blam. She encounters pawnbroker Brit Leach. Because he's Brit Leach, he offers her an unusual Brit Leach deal. He will make a mold of her beauty in return for a whopping $10,000. In the words of a certain smarmy biker kid, easy money. She signs a contract, which is kind enough to rescind the whole deal if she returns within a certain time frame. But why the hell would you back out of this offer? Maybe because the dude is literally stealing your looks via voodoo poodoo in order to preserve his wife's corpse. Ugh. As I said, typical Brit Leech. No time to worry about any of that. Get on with a shopping montage, featuring the hottest beat of 1989. The episode builds to an interesting climax, whereupon all of Sylvia's bad choices trap her in a prison of her own making. I could give you your beauty back. That's what you really want. Only Sin Deep is not a bad episode by any means. The thematics are clear, and the twists are established well enough beforehand. It also has dustbin battering rams, that's always fun, and the final kick in the gut for Sylvia, as her futile efforts to fix her cracked mold in the gutter fail, one of the greatest moments of the season. However, when looking at Tales from the Crypt as a whole, episodes like Only Sin Deep can easily get lost in the shuffle. My decision for fourth place may well prove to be my most controversial opinion of the video. This next episode is memorable and beloved by members of the horror community when discussing the series. My own memories of it are strong, but when I recently sat down to rewatch this whole season, it dropped a little in my favour. Please don't whack me in the head with a fire poker. But in fourth position, I nominate and all through the house. This is the only episode of the season that was previously adapted in the 1972 Tales from the Crypt movie. Scripted again by Mr. Double Decker and directed by Robert Bloody Zemeckis of all people, this version features superior tension, a better ending, and a creepier Santa, all while inducing the tada with a sense of humour. Ah! 
and all through the house is a relatively simple story compared to the others of the season. It begins with a woman giving her lover one last poke. Suspense already ensues as her young daughter keeps bugging her about Santa and Christmas as Mummy is trying to cover up and dispose of the bloody crime. Panic escalates as news spreads that a murderous crazy person has escaped. He's dressed as Santa and is visiting houses on Christmas Eve to deliver an axe in your stockings. Uh, we're calling everyone in your immediate vicinity about the individual who escaped from the mental hospital tonight. Now, this confirms she knows a killer is on the loose in her neighborhood. Sounds like the perfect alibi for your marital murderings. A conclusion that it takes way too long for the woman to realize. Still, this new plan is scuppered by the arrival of the killer, of course. An admittedly scary sequence of events begins, culminating with her getting stuck in the closet, while the sinful Santa slowly climbs to her kid's bedroom window. It closes out with a blackly comic sting, followed by some pretty haunting screams from Mary Ellen Trainer. It's a solid episode, don't get me wrong. If you ask me to picture an evil Santa, this is the one I'd think of first. He's a nasty piece of work. He looks like a Gremlins 2 puppet come to life by some freaky backwards ass Christmas miracle. It's the most outwardly scary episode of the season, a nice little festive slasher, but some of the fear is squandered by the campy, cartoony elements. <laughs> this is Tales from the Crypt, so that style is to be expected to some degree, but maybe it should have dialed it down just a notch. Huh? Honestly, I dislike that the mother is also a killer. I know that's the source material, and it's there to basically justify the brutal end. Don't feel bad for this terrorized lady. She's a killer too, don't you know? Having her be more innocent would heighten the scares and make her rootable. But again, this is Tales from the Crypt. This series cares for two things, and two things only. Irony, and the certainty that bad things will come for bad people. We're in the top three now. How exciting! My bronze award goes to... Collection completed. Despite the comedy running all the way through it, the season one finale just breaks my heart. M. Emmett Walsh plays Jonas, a very bitter man who begrudgingly enters retirement. Audra Lindley is his wife, Anita. She is on the complete other end of the personality spectrum, absolutely brimming with excitement to finally have more time with her husband after all these years. These two personalities clash over small domestic squabbles, wanting to use the bathroom at the same time, the husband's crushing boredom, but over time, the bigger issues stem from Anita's obsessive dedication to the neighborhood animals, including a bulldog named after the old man. Oh, he reminded me of you. Jonas tries out a couple of hobbies, mainly aggressive pruning, but he finds his eventual calling in the art of taxidermy. He slaughters and makes trophies of his wife's best furry friends, and in return, receives the very same treatment. It's a tough job being a fan of animals and horror films. Early in your fandom, you realize you'll just have to develop a thick skin. Look how adorable all the pets are, wearing those little hats, upset that the retirement party's been cancelled. Sad but most of them suffer a grim fate, but at least Jonas gets his comeuppance in one of the most disturbing images of the show. It's hard to describe the effect this episode has on me. It's that same feeling when watching humorous or child-friendly content that also has very dark themes underlining them. Look how he's manically fondling those dead critters. You're laughing and you're entertained, but it all feels off like a feverish nightmare. In other words, inject it straight into my veins. I also love that the credits read Nicholas Pike over footage of fish. This episode was directed by Mary Lambert, the same year she helped Pet Cemetery. What the hell has this woman got against cats? In second place, we're going from cats to more cats. Yes, my silver award goes to Dig This Cat. He's real gone. Joey Pantaloons is a drunken bum who is offered a deal. A suspicious doctor claims he can give a man nine lives after performing some surgery between him and a cat. He wants the desperate man to serve as his guinea pig in return for a monetary reward. The offer isn't quite as inviting as the one given to Sylvia Vane, especially when the initial test involves the death of a cat and yourself being subsequently shot in the head. 
like Jesus' pantaloons before him, he is revived. The experiment was a success. Complete baloney in realistic terms, but if you care about realism, you're in the wrong fucking place, my friends. Verpair begin to sell this scientific marvel as a carnival act, with audience members shedding out big bucks to watch a man die and resurrect before their eyes. For an increased fee, you can even have the chance of killing the man too, consequence free. As Joey transforms from a sleazy version of Marty McFly no, what's your point, Doc? into a cocky, greedy murderer, he speeds towards an inevitable, awful end. The ending is quite obvious for any audience member paying attention, especially taking the episode's flashback structure into account. But even if you figure out the twist early, it doesn't matter, because the journey to get there is so much fun. His method of death is switched up each time, and even an unplanned one is slipped in effectively. The first live death is pretty horrific already, and only becomes more intense thanks to the nightmarish editing and Richard Donner's superb direction. Drowning slowly and painfully in front of all these gawking eyes, eager to enjoy your demise? Joey's realisation that he's going to be buried alive for real is twisted, but honestly, very deserved by that point. Screw you, Joey Pantaloons! Look, even the cat's taunting you! A fantastic episode, and a hell of a lot better than that Kevin Spacey crap. And in first place, my favourite episode from season 1, The Man Who Was Deaf. Not only do I rate the show's debut as the best of the season, but I would also place it within the coveted S ranking. The episode stars William Sadler as Niles Talbot, a state executioner responsible for frying society's very worst criminals in the electric chair. People right. tell me most executioners never look the prisoners in the eye. Not me. I always look. His pitch-perfect narration, delivered in that wonderfully sly drawl, guides us through his nasty job, and the rest of his gleefully cynical world views. Make no mistake, this is not a nice man. He's plainly deriving pleasure from flipping the switch, taking delight in how every prisoner claims the governor's gonna cool, yet not once, has that happened? They say electric current's so fast the brain gets cooked just as soon as the switch is thawed. Prisoner never feels a thing. Boy, I'd hate to think that was true. Sucks to be Niles, then, when capital punishment becomes outlawed. Out of work, he roams the streets and the bars, and occasionally visits high profile court cases. Time and time again, Niles witnesses scum of the earth cheat the justice system. The first example is the mean biker from Terminator 2, breaking typecasting here by betraying a mean biker. A mere clerical error means this piece of work gets off scot-free, so Niles puts his extensive knowledge of electricity to good use, becoming a buzzing vigilante. He continues his spree until he's caught by the police. In a gruesomely ironic twist, capital punishment is reinstated, and Niles is given the chair. Kicking and screaming about how the governor's gonna cool, he meets his smoky haired demise without a single ring on the telephone. Walter Hill brings his trademark urban grit to the proceedings as both writer and director, while Sadler is on top form. His smarmy narration elevates it from a good episode to one of the greats. The prison sections are suitably morose and feel like a horror precursor to the later HBO show Oz. Though, let's be real. Every episode of Oz is scarier than any episode of Tales from the Crypt. After the job falls through, it is satisfying to watch these criminals receive justice, and Sadler's performance makes you want to cheer him on. The ending twist snaps you back to reality, and you instead enjoy the irony of this equally horrible man receiving his karma. Overall, it is the perfect debut for the program, as it is emblematic of the series to come. Pitch Black Humour Star talent on screen and off, delicious irony, nudity, strong language, stronger violence. How wonderful that the best place for a newcomer to start the show would be the very first episode itself. And there we are. On the whole, season 1 is a very capable, if short, set of episodes. It only has the one bad episode in my opinion. And when the Crypt Keeper smashed the mirror and achieved 7 years bad luck, he willed into existence a total of seven seasons across seven years. If there's enough interest, and if I could be bothered, I'll rank the rest of the seasons down the line. But what about your opinions on season one? 
I'm curious how the rest of you would rank these six episodes. Please let us know in the comments below.